Hey, what is up guys? Today we're gonna be playing with AR a little bit. So we've got these playing cards and on top of the playing cards are our friends. The little wolf I modeled like two days ago or something. And um, this one is really bad tracking image. But this one is cool. So let's try this out. So we're gonna end up with something like this we can play around with. So um, a lot of things we can do with that. Just imagine you had like a Hearthstone game going on or a Magic the Gathering game you had going on. You can put every single card as tracking and then spawn 3D models on top of it. And these thing over here, now I don't do it because I don't animate so much, but this thing can have an actual animation and like do a wolf attack or some kind, some kind of particle effect, who knows. There's a lot of things to do with that and as you can tell the tracking is not bad, it's really good actually, depending on your image. So this one is a really good tracking versus this card, which has a really bad tracking. It really depends on the quality of your images. So, guys, without further ado, let's actually get started developing some AR. Okay, guys, the first thing you will need if you're like me and if you're running a 64-bit uh, OS on Windows, then you're going to need the 32-bit Unity editor. And the reason is this, the plugin we're going to be using for uh, AR does not support Windows 64-bit just yet. It does it for Mac, so if you're running on a Mac, you can get, uh, you don't have to get this if you're already running a 64-bit editor. But in my case, I am running a 64-bit on the Windows, so I will need to go over here. I have did a simple uh, Google search, I did Unity 32-bit. In the download archive, I'll download the most recent version, and in the download over here, I'll make sure to select the Unity Editor 32-bits. So simple enough, that's the first thing you'll need. The second thing you will need is an actual camera. Um, I'm using a webcam for this, or you could be hooking up your phone and using this as the camera. Now, of course, you do need a camera because you're doing augmented reality, so you need to have an actual view of the real world to augment it. And finally, the third thing you will need is a Vuforia account. And um, to get this, it's really simple, it's free as well. You go over here on Vuforia, their website. You're going to find a way to actually sign in, so let's say you were going to go under Tools and Resources. And uh, just click on that. Eventually, you're going to end up on the developer.vuforia.com, and that is where you're going to sign in. Now, I already have my account. It's right here, and I've signed in. So once we actually sign in, we can download a package for Unity. So I will just click here, accept the terms and license that I've read before, agree, and then you're going to be ending up downloading a package. Now, at this point, it's pretty much a time where we can launch our Unity and start a new project. So if you're like me and you're just going to be typing it down there, just make sure it's the 32-bit. I can't stress this enough. You're going to be using the 32-bit editor, so in my case, the one that is uh, located in Program Files x86. I'll click on this one. already made a test before, but we'll create a brand new project. And let's call it AR, or let's call it uh, Wolf Battle, something like that. Which is going to be our AR project. We're going to click on Create Project and head over into Unity. So we're going to be importing that before your package over here in my download folder. Here it is. I will double click on it and it will automatically import all of this and we need pretty much everything so just click on import. And it's going to take a little while then you're going to have everything you need in your project. The next step is the target. So. The way AR works is um, you have a, a special camera that is going to be looking for images that it's stored inside of its database. So assume that you're telling your camera, look out for the McDonald's logo. Then every single frame that you're moving your phone around or your camera around, it's going to scan the image and actually look for that McDonald's logo. But you got to tell him somewhere um, that you actually want to look for that logo. Now, a good way to do this that will actually persists through all your project is doing it on their website. They have a nice target manager they call it and you can actually do that here. So we will head back to their website. We already got an account so this is where we left off, left off last time. Now we're gonna go under develop and you have two things to create. First a license manager and then a target manager. Let's quickly create a license manager. It takes like a second. Application name is going to be Wolf Battle. And then this is for mobile. We're using the first starter kit. And then we click next. You confirm and then you get your API key, which we'll use a little bit later on. 
but not right now. The second thing to do is actually create those targets I was talking about. So over here you have the license manager, make sure you click on target manager and this is where you got, you're going to be starting to create um, your database. Now I've already made a database before but uh, I don't know if I should keep it. Just for the sake of it, I'll go ahead and create a new one with you guys. So this is going to be the wolf battle database and it's going to be for a device. You, cre you create it and um, it's like a real database so you need to, you can't have it like uh, spaces. Alright, so once you have your wolf battle database, this is where you're going to create targets. So like I said, the McDonald's logo or what we used to do over here. I've seen people use coffee mugs, I've seen people use their um, door passes and all that stuff. Today I'm going to be using uh, playing cards basically. And let me just help you out here and we're going to create some. So to create some, you need an actual really clear image of what you're trying to scan. We're going to do a add target. We're going to start with a single image in this video. We're going to hit browse and I'm going to look for that image I was talking about. So Ace of Heart, I'm going to be using playing cards. So Ace of Heart for me works fine. The width, I'm just going to be putting one in here. It doesn't have to be that big. And the name of my image is going to be Ace Heart. We upload the target and that's pretty much all we need. Now we're going to add, we're going to add a second target just for the sake of testing it out. This one is going to be the Ace of Spade. Now, I don't know if you can see the target just fine. I don't know if you can see the image just fine. You'll see it more when we actually go back in Unity. But uh, basically, here they are. So this is my first target, or second, and that's the other one over here. Simple enough, right? I just took pictures of playing card, and that's what I'll be using. Now, they're not really clear. They might be a little bit choppy, so if you need this to be um, more smooth, more fluid when, when you're in the game, try to make it perfect. Try to actually take the base logo that was used to print this card. Alright, so back in the engine now, it's really simple stuff. Now what, what we're going to be doing is uh, go under main camera, we're going to delete this one. We do not need a main camera anymore because Vuforia has a prefab for us that is called the AR camera. We're going to be, we're going to be drag and dropping that right here and then there is a lot of stuff that just came in on the right side in the inspector. If I press play now, we get a lot of error. The first one being we do not have a app key. And that is fine because we've created one. Let's just go fetch it right now. It is over here on the website. You're going to go under license manager and then use the wolf battle. Beneath that is our API key. Drag and drop, copy go back in the game and just put it in this field in the API license key. Now if we press on play now, we get this authorization request. Now I'm gonna hit allow for this site and let's see it was not able to actually boot my webcam for some reason but usually it does it so let me find out why. It says could not start graph. That's a little bit weird. Alright, so I think I worked out why this is not working. Basically, it is because uh, I'm using OBS, which is a software that helps me record this video. But sometime in OBS, I also use my webcam to show out like some stuff going on right here in real life. And um, basically, OBS is currently using my webcam, and Unity is not unable to actually use it because it's it's already being used. So what I will do really quickly is I will um close OBS and I will start it again after making sure that Unity takes control of my webcam. Alright, so we're back and over here is, as you can tell, my webcam. Here's my two cards and it basically does nothing. So let me just try this again. I'll stop the engine then start again and hopefully Unity still wants to have my webcam. Okay, so now it works. So if you get the same error as me, just make sure your webcam is not being used by another software such as Skype or the uh, Logitech basic software or a rat, which would be really uncool for you, but it might happen. So all right, here's our my two card and I'm going to try and make sure that they're being detected whenever we play the game. So we're gonna head over to the AR camera and this is configured fine, we don't need to do anything here. So you see how we created targets over here in the target manager. Well we've created those targets but we never really told our game that we're going to be using them. 
Now here's how we do it. We are going to hit download database. Clicking this, it's going to ask you do you want this for SDK, for Eclipse, Xcode, all that kind of stuff, or you want it for Unity. We're going to choose Unity and, hit, and then hit download. At which point you're going to have another package and you're pretty much just going to open it again. And here are the two image we were talking about earlier. So the Ace Heart and also the Ace Spade. Hit import. And now this should be in your project under editor, QCAR, image target, wolf battle. And here's the two image we're talking about. All right, so at this point, we can start telling our camera to actually um, look for those. All right, so now this is the moment where you actually um, start telling Unity which one, which image to actually track. So what you need to do for this is you're going to go under before ya, prefab, and you're going to be dragging whichever type of object you've designed, defined on the website. What we did is we imported two normal textures to two image. That is what we're going to be doing here as well. So we're going to be using image, drag and drop this in your scene. Now you get this nice little plane square that um, all you have to do is actually just configure and here is how you do it. So I'm simply going to move it here so I can see it. You're going to be choosing under image target behavior, predefine. So leave it on predefine, then choose which image you want. In the database wolf battle, I want to be using the ace of spade. Now the other settings are just fine the way they are right now. And we don't need to do anything else in there. We're going to be adding a new image target to that. So here's the second one. Again, we're going to go under image target behavior, predefine, wolf battle, and this is going to be the ace of heart. And here they are. Now, um, whether you move it here or there, it doesn't really matter because in the end, once the game starts, those are going to be, they're going to be removed. As you can tell, they're not really removed, but they're not being rendered. And that is something really important that you must notice. So whether you place them here or somewhere else, doesn't matter. Those are the objects that are going to be um, reposition and re, uh, re the orientation of it is going to be redefined every single frame depending on the tracking of the AR camera. Now while that might sound complicated, let me explain to you what exactly I mean by that. So as soon as, we, as we've got those two there, we're going to go under the database load behavior. Make sure we load pretty much everything, so load wolf battle database, active it, then press on play. You're going to be allowing this webcam and then we're going to be taking a look at pretty much everything. So if we take a do, um, an actual look down here in the camera, it says, sorry, in the console, I keep messing up my words. It says trackable ace of heart loss and ace of spade has also been lost. So it's not able to find these two objects we've made. So now we're going to be clearing the console and hopefully it's able to detect something. So here is the ace of spade. And as you can tell, oh, it's really, <laughs> it's really shaky. But as you can tell over here, it pretty much says um, Ace of Spade has been found. Now if we just move it like that, it's been lost, then it's been found again, lost and found. Same thing should work for this if my image are fine. Oh, this one is a little bit harder to detect and that's probably because of the lighting I've used when I took the picture. Now if I had a better picture of this, it would be, of course, easier. So. Now the big question, how exactly do we turn this into actual playing card? How do we turn this into actual you know, gameplay for our games? And here is what we'll be doing. As you can tell over here, we've got our image target. I'm going to be changing its name for Wolf 1 and the second is going to be Wolf 2. And let me quickly import a FBX in here. And here it is. So basically this wolf down there. Um, so I want this card to actually be spawning a wolf. All I'll be doing, and it's really simple, and I love that, you're going to be drag and dropping your prefab. Could be a prefab, could be an object like this, just on top of it as a children. So this is now a children of the Ace of Spade. And let's actually resize that the way we want it. Does that make sense? Sure. So just assume you're playing Hearthstone or like a card game. You can be spawning a 3D model of your card just on top of it. And that could be very fun. Now, same thing goes for the other card. I'll be just spawning the same exact wolf because I don't really have a lot of models. And uh, let's just assume the same size. Position it in the center a bit like this. And we should now be good to go. 
So here is what's going to happen. We're going to press on play and they're both going to disappear. We're going to be allowing our webcam. Now let's try with the artist one. Hopefully this one is detected. So here I am trying to move this around and hopefully we can see our wolf spawn eventually. And it's really hard to have this spawn because my image, like I said, is really bad. So we're going to go with this one. This one is easy. As you can tell, we've got our wolf over here. We move the card around and it just moves with it. And that's very good tracking as you can tell. So say we had our Pokemon battle or whatever battle, we can be laying that right here. And then hopefully if I manage to make this work, oops. Oh yeah, that's something that happens with AR a lot. Gotta be careful about obstructing the images. Alright, let's try with this one. Hopefully we can get it to work. Alright, so I was not able to actually spawn a wolf using this, and that's because my tracking image is not good enough. What I did is I went online and I just grabbed this image. Now, hopefully, um, they're able to recognize that, you know, it's the same thing. It's kind of the same thing, it's using like a different set, this is like a special kind of card, I guess, but uh, in terms of this logo, I think it's pretty much similar enough for this to recognize it. So. Here's what I'm going to be doing, and hopefully this works. So I'll be going back here in the target manager, go under my wolf battle, and find my haze of heart. Here it is. And as you can tell, it, it pretty much says right here, rating is like zero star. And that's pretty much just because it's it's really hard to actually track this kind of object. Now, um, I'm going to hit remove, or can I actually change? Oh, update target right here. So I'm going to say update target, choose a new file, and I will find whatever I just downloaded. And I will go grab whatever I just downloaded. So here it is, then hit done. And hopefully this is now able to detect it. Uh, what we'll be doing, and it says it here it's in one star, so that might be a little bit hard, but let's actually try again. At least it has one star compared to the other one where it had none. Uh, we're gonna do download database. Go under Unity Editor, download it again, and we're simply going to re-import this like that and as you can tell it did change here alright so back in our game we're gonna try to spawn some wolf and actually have a battle going on alright here's my card it was able to detect this one just fine without even moving now what about this and I was able to find it finally so here it is it's really shaky as you can tell it's not a good tracking so I'll just be really careful and lay it down there oh and I lost it. <laughs> Alright, so let me try that again. But yeah guys, you get the picture. So basically you can play around with these. Make sure you have a really good tracking image and then it's really smooth. As you can tell, I just play around with this guy. Um, there's a lot of things that could be done with this technology. You could have like some real battle going on if you guys uh, are playing say Hearthstone or... Well, Hearthstone with real cards really. And you say Magic the Gathering, you could be spawning those 3D models right on top of it. Add animation, so this, this thing can be animated. This thing can have an actual gameplay logic. So everything that you can do in a normal game, you can do it on this guy as well, while he's being controlled by a card or any logo. Like I said, we've been using some coffee mugs, we've been using some uh, door passes. There is pretty much anything you can do with that, as long as you have the ideas. So guys, hopefully this was able to spark an interest into it. Hopefully you can start developing a little bit of AR. I know with the whole Pokemon Go stuff uh, going on right now, it's really popular to start and try doing something like that. So hopefully it inspire you to do something. And guys, um, thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know. If you want me to do more on AR and maybe actually just try developing like a small prototype, just leave me a like, let me know in the comments, and I will try to actually do something with that. And um, like I said, if you have any comment or question, please Leave them in the comment section below. Other than that, please check out the Patreon page if you wish to support me in whatever I'm trying to do. That'd be really cool. There's also a reward included in there. And um, subscribe for more. I'll see you in the next one.